Well, afternoon guys. Out on today's walk. Um, I'm not going to drive anywhere today, it's absolutely getting rammed. So we never get up to park and we're bit quite busy. So I'm going to try and take a bit of a bit of a beaten track. So today's walk, I'm rocking the Teddy Pratchett look today, is we're going to go over to Brough, which is uh, with the site of a Roman fort. Uh, we're going to pass a couple of medieval crosses on the way. We're going to go to Wind Hill, the site of a battle in the seventh century and then down to Hope Cross and then back along the bottom of Loose Hill. I'm not going up on a great ridge today, it would just be madness. And then, uh, yeah, back home. So about 12 miles all told, 1600 foot of ascent. So it should be a nice steady walk, quite warm today. Uh, got my new wrapper base layer I got from Go Outdoors, that was on offer, so I got that. So that's underneath, my fits a bit better than the old one. It's getting a bit tight, that. So yeah, um, we're gonna head off on a walk. Um, I just did a 3D walkthrough before that, so I'll I'll do that now, and then I'll catch up with you. And out of Castleton and on the on the footpaths, guys. Quick 3D walkthrough today's walk. So we start in Castleton, at my house, and what we do, we just follow the road down to what a place called Spittle Bridge. Here, made of wilt water mill is. We carry on all the way down through to Hope across the fields, and you can see we're going to Hope here. And then we go across to the Roman fort at Brough, which is just where this quarry is here. So if you can see that there, just there is where the Roman fort is. We drop down to Brough, a bit of road walking then, up to a place called Aston Hall. So we follow the road up to Aston Hall in, in Aston by Hope, or Aston with Hope I think it's called. We then start a bit of a climb now. So then we climb up to Wind Hill. So we go along the side here along the edge and then onto the main windhill path up parking clough to the summit okay and then along to the trig point some nice views there uh, stunning views from all around from the top of windhill and obviously there's a site of the battle etc which i'll take you through but then drop down windhill all the way to hope cross along this ridge so you get some stunning views over towards kinder the great ridge the reservoirs all port castles etc and then once we get to the bottom, we drop down here to Edale End. And then once we get to Edale End, we cross the railway line under a bridge. And then we start to make our way up towards Loose Hill, or the bottom of Loose Hill. So we follow our way down here until we get to this footpath. We start to climb past Loose Hill End over to Loose Hill Farm. Once we get there, we then drop down into Castleton, back along the way there. So all the way back down to Castleton across the bottom of the valley there. So all in all, quite a good walk that. Um, just under 12 miles, 640 foot elevation. But you climb about 1600 foot in total. Uh, most of that will win at the start. And that essentially is that. A nice circular walk. Probably take you about, I don't know, um, took me about four and a half hours I think something like that but you know two and a, if, you, if you average about what two and a half miles an hour you're probably talking four four and a half hours to do that walk okay so now we'll crack on with the actual walk itself off a beaten track now this takes us down towards Hope and eventually across the fields towards Brough so as we come around this corner here shit cement works over there so you come around the corner here there's uh, an old water mill and uh, I'll find out a bit more about that so a bit more mileage today 12 miles and um, they put me on some allopurinol for me to get out now and it's been a step change like my foot's like a brand new foot so <laughs> absolutely superb and then just in the distance probably see if I'm pointing in the right place there's a wind hill which is where we're headed so we're headed over there back over there and in a big loop but yeah that's the site of a water mill i've got my head 15th 16th century but i could be wrong but what i'll do i've got a book at home uh, all about the history of castleton so i'll put that up in the a link to that in the bio as well um, but yeah i'll find out a bit more details but yeah there used to be a water mill on the uh, river now so yeah, headed down now here for a couple of miles. If there's anything interesting as usual, I'll show you.
So there's the river now. Or peat water actually, I think that's called. Yeah, I think that's peat water, peat hole water actually, not river now. It goes down into the river now, I think I'll double check that. Just walk along here to the all the cement works. Very nice. Not too bad now, I'm off a beaten track. It was mental in Castleton. Uh, as you'd expect on a good Friday. A real feel for my missus working in the George this weekend. That is going to be mental. But I'm having my first pint in 12 weeks tonight. So <laughs> we shall see how that goes. Two pints, I'll be back on them back. <laughs> but I've started uh, doing some weights now and a bit of healthy eating. So trying to get back on it and lose a little bit of weight. That'll help. The other thing they did on these blood tests was I was right at the very top end of the level on the diabetes check so not pre-diabetic but if you carry on in that path <laughs> so cut out the carbs and sugars and watch what I drink I guess exercise a bit more all the usual things that I don't know if, uh, if you're the same but I tend to cycle I'll get quite fit and healthy for a while and then <laughs> back to old tricks but uh, I guess at 55 <laughs> you've got two choices don't you you carry on as you are and what will be what will be or you can try and change things so i'll try and do that i think moderation a bit of a, i think it's an overflow pool there stop flooding i think it's not a sewage works that's for sure uh yeah but quite a nice little water this wonderful human we're fire fishing on that I think there are, there's a fly fishing club that uh, uses it, I think, I'm not sure who, but anyway, yeah, you can see like Peveril Castle in the distance, when it's passes there, you've got the uh, paragliders going off, Mam Tor, that looks busy as hell, all along that great ridge, there's a few on Windhill, but I'm hoping I didn't really see many people now until I get there, but uh, yeah, let's see how we get on. There's enough signs here telling you there might be a train track. Over here now, and then we're going to get to the road to left towards Hope and a quick right turn over to Broth. A little bit wet. And yet, another gate left open. I don't fucking know why it's so difficult to close a gate. So, off over this way now. You can see Windhill up there. Loose hills behind those trees. Probably a little uh, woodland there, down to the cold water. That comes from the Peak Cavern, the, the big cave in Castleton. It's a cool place to do, to do gigs and all sorts, cinema and everything. There we go. This is where we're headed. Navio, or Navio, this called various things. That's an old sign, 1909. And then the sponsorship of these benches. We're going through here. Um, hopefully no bulls and cows. Seems to be all sheep at the moment. I think the Roman cross is around here. The Roman cross, the old cross, remains of a cross. I might have a quick just wander up the hill, see if it's to the side of the road, because they tend to follow roads. So I'm gonna quick wander up. If I can't see it, we'll come back down and, and go through here. I can't see anything obvious, I've gone past the point where it says the only thing I can think it might be I'll just show you in a second that's where we're headed later that's gonna put airs on my chest <laughs> oh, this sun hat's brilliant mate, keeps the sun off the only thing I can think, possibly possibly is that that big stone there, that could be it, potentially. 
it's on the bang on the mark on the map. I can't see any other signs. It said remains. That could be anything. But anyway, we'll wander back down now and go to the go to the footpath and rejoin it. Nice view over towards Hope there. Here you can see Blue Cell in the background, the church, and then where we're headed. And then over there, because it's Bamford Edge. And the back there, I think that's Stanage Edge. Actually, someone gave me a good um, link to an app that recognised them. It's not perfect, but it's an obviously augmented reality, but uh, called Peak Lenses. I'll put a link to it uh, in the old uh, description, because it was quite useful. I mean, Outdoor Active does it as well, but the beauty of the uh, Peak Lens one, I think, and Variety, is you can actually download an offline version, which uh, on a Outdoor Active, I think you have to have the connect internet connection so we head off here that might be a cross over there potentially but I'm also might do a video over these churches around here because there's some lovely old churches I do love a good church it's just uh, quite peaceful aren't they but the architecture is pretty cool and the graveyards my missus loves wandering around the graveyards looking at all the old gravestones and see how old you can find them too uh, we must be getting old. <laughs> At one time it was partying all day and all weekend, but uh, I found this far more enjoyable. Right, so we headed off up here, over towards Brough. We actually go through the Roman Fort site. Footpath goes pretty much smack through the middle of it. And when I get there, we'll do a bit of a bit of a talk about it, what's there, and uh, when it was built, and all that type of thing. Could that be it? I don't know. It looks like. If it was, someone's maybe appropriated it as a gatepost in the past. Uh, but you don't know. I'll make a good shot though with a window in the background. I'll take a picture of that. It's a bit old quad. That looks to me like they've drained or it's dried up. Gravel pit. Up there, Shatton Moor. One of my first walks I did, I went up there and around the edges. Uh, that was quite a good walk, so you know. I'll put a, I'll put a link up there so you can uh, link to that video it's worth a look that was quite interesting up over Shatter Moor across over to Moor back round through uh, Shatton and back to Bradwell it was a nice little walk some interesting stuff up there quite quiet as well now what I have seen it's a bit worrying and why the freaking sign wasn't at the start of the walk is that the, the footbridge down here is closed temporarily until June this year unless they finish the work before so uh, we might as well do a bit of fucking wading <laughs> I mean why not put it right at the start of the footpath so oh you know don't walk down there mate you can't get through as opposed to the stall before absolutely ridiculous not even a clear sign either to be honest with you just a bit of A4 printed paper anyway we'll see what we're faced with when we get here because uh, these boots are waterproof <laughs> Let's see how we get on. Anyway, I'll catch up with you when we get to that point and uh, we may have to have an alternative route. <laughs> but we'll see. So I think the bridge is here. It's not looking like it's too close to me. No? Oh well. It's really good. That's a relief. Catch up with you in a bit. Um, but yeah. So this is it, a Roman fort of a Navio or Navio, you can see the earth bank, pretty much all that's left and a few stones I think, but we'll have a quick walk around them and I'll uh, get out of the way of these people and give you a bit of a history of it, because I have made some notes, I double checked them, because last time I made some notes and I hadn't saved them, <laughs> so I had to wing it, but then that's the story of my life, wing it. <laughs> As long as you know one bit more than everyone else in the room, you're a genius. There's some stones here. So you can see the embankment just around here. 
So basically, Navio, which means on the river in Latin, was built in 80 AD and then rebuilt again in 150 AD and sort of in practice until 350 AD. So uh, around for quite a few hundred years. I'll find out some more details for you. It also included a Victus, I think it's called. Just go and check. Um, yeah, so yeah, like I said, built in 80 AD. It's a Roman fort and viscous settlement. So that was the people who sort of settled around it in order to support the, the fort. Okay. Um, it's uh, linked to places such as Buxton, which was known as Aquas... Amemza, uh, there was uh, Zadotalia, which was later called Melandra, which is near Glossop, and Mantic, which was Manchester. So, in 150 AD, this was rebuilt, so I think it was attacked, by a, um, a legion from the southwest of France called the Aquitaine, and they found, when they excavated this in 1903, they found a stone chamber underneath the Principia, which was the sort of main office, and in there there was an altar, a gritstone altar and also this stone with the engraving telling them who had built this, this fort. Okay, so that's all quite interesting. The gritstone altar was dedicated to the goddess Amementia, Amemetia or Amumecta who dwelt in the sacred waters here. So you got the rivers down here, the No and the Peak Holes water goes into it. Now that was a Roman god but actually it was also a Celtic god which was assimilated into the Roman uh, belief system. So that's quite common with conquerors. If you think of even like the Christian church, they assimilated a lot of pagan festivals like Easter and Christmas into their calendar because it just makes it easier to sort of, uh, you know, merge with the natives if that were, if that's the case. So there's some stones here, as you can see, a few stones left. It was around three acres when it was built the first time and then expanded after that. I'll just see if I've got any more facts about it. Yes, yeah, so basically, the purpose of this fort, it protects Doctor's Gate, which goes over to Glossop, the portway, which is a very ancient track. That probably goes back to prehistoric times. In fact, that's not a bad little few-day walk, so I might even do that one day. And then Baffin Gate, which goes to Buxton. And the main reason for these routes, obviously, the Romans loved lead, and there was a lot of lead in the Peak District, so... This fort was really here to protect those routes for the lead mines and uh, transferring and transporting the lead. So yeah, all very interesting. And just on the doorstep. So that's the Roman fort of uh, Navio. Not a lot left of it now. There are some. They found some very cool, I think it's called a centurion stone, which was basically engraved with, uh, again, like I said about this uh, legion from the southwest of France, the Aquitaine Legion. Uh, legion slow down a bit still and get your words right um, who built it in 158 or rebuilt it in 150 AD so there's quite a few of those stones in Buxton Museum so I'm sure there'll be pictures of that on the internet so again I'll see if I can find anything but yeah quite a cool little site um, we're going to head off now down to the road and then we're going to head off up here and I think over that way and then up to the top of Wynn Hill that's going to make me sweat a bit, so I might just stock up. But I'm going to take some pictures now. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll head off.
quick fact I did forget, actually Broth, which is the name of a little hamlet here, is actually uh, Old English for Fort, hence uh, a bit of a connection there between Navio and the name of the village now. So I'm going to get some water down in a second then, just before <laughs> before I head up this, this fucker here. <laughs> That's going to be a good one. Um, cause my knee's twinging a little bit, but hey, it'll be worth it. And tonight, I found out cider is slightly better for you if you've got gout. Um, they have a compound called purines which inflames gout quite badly and real ale or beer is about the, the worst thing you can get for it. It's got something like 20 milligrams per litre. I found out since that cider, not the sweet crap, the proper put your mouth up sort of type of stuff has only got 0.4 so and it's also a bit stronger in alcohol. So I think I'll give that a whirl. They do aspals I think in the local tonight so I might have a few parts of that see how it goes. I mean, this medication will help as well and then uh, as my doctor said you know you can try and pinpoint what causes gout but you're probably wasting your time so take the tablets and uh, enjoy yourself so I think I might take that quite literally <laughs> so anyway yeah down to Brough now just a few houses and a farm shop I think really not a lot here and then we're going to follow the road and then take a footpath over to the right I think and then head up over to Wind Hill so I'll catch up with you shortly Cute little bridge. It's a nice old bridge. It's all our old. We've got this modern footbridge next to it for um, people. Look at that, that's quite cool. That will make quite a good picture of who's still in the background actually. Old weir. Just checking, I think that. It's got a bit of ribbon over there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a ribbon over there. I could still be wrong. I'll check all these rivers out. Quite confusing, but take some pictures and then we'll crack it up there to Aston Hall play catch up with you when we get there so there you can see the Great Ridge that'll be a ram today make a good photo don't I'll take that but we headed up there but I think we're going to go across here and then back up bit better than going that's how I feel <laughs> and then we're going to go across there down to Hope Cross and then back up and round the bottom of Loose Hill there but I'll take a nice picture of them trees there I think the great ridge of Mamtor and everything in the background I'll take that now very good panorama there Shout more offer to more and then you come around here Bradwell and Brough that way Cement Factory, Peveril Castle, Castleton, Mamtor, Hollins Cross, Backtor, Lewes Hill, and just behind here is Winhill. I can't count how many times I've said Winhill in my videos. <laughs> I bet it must have been triple figures now. <sighs> A bit parched now. When I get to the bottom of this climb, Top up on water, definitely tonight it's going to be cider. Just got in my head now a nice cold pint of cider just glistening there. <laughs> I might even have one on the way back home before I even get back to the house. <laughs> anyway, we'll keep plodding up here to Aston Hall Farm, I think, or Aston Hall, and then uh, let me start the climb. That's Aston Hall. Built in 1578, I think. You can tell that sort of Tudorish or Stuarts, whichever it was. Tudors, wasn't it? Elizabeth was the last of the Tudors, I think. Uh, now these places still exist, isn't it? We're going to follow the road round here.
take a path to the left and start climbing. One of the little places is called Aston. Hope with Aston, I think they call it. Very quaint. And we take a footpath past these houses, I think. Well, it might even be here. Yeah, I think it's here. So we'll follow that and grab a drink. Got them beautiful daffodils there. That'll make a cracking photo. I'll catch up with you in a bit. Old water trough there. Eh? Cool. As inviting as that looks, I'm going to grab a water bottle and then this cute little path here. Look at that. Wonderful. Yeah, this cute little path here. It's what the envisaged footpaths being, isn't it? All the gnarled roots and almost a tunnel of trees. So if this is to Wen Hill now, start the climb. Cool little spring here. Eh? I've also tapped into. It's quite old, aren't it? Oh, I get thirsty already. <laughs> We're going up here and round here, but again, stunning 360 the Hope Valley. Or a good size of it. See the quarry there, hope cement works. That's a beast. Beautiful. Beautiful. Knackering, but beautiful. That was a bit steep. We've come right up the way here. And now we're gonna work our way around there. I think it flattens off for a little bit then. For the last climb up to Wen Hill. Love these old styles. And we're now on to, as you can see there, open access land. That was in one of my videos a while back about different permissions. But yeah, stunning day. Let's crack on. Whoa, this is a climb. Bamford Edge there. It's Tanner Edge in the background. I think over that way is Kerbor and Froggart. But yeah, beautiful. The shadows over the valley. I'm hoping around this corner this levels off a bit. Because that was a hell of a climb for me pretty much doing all of the altitude in one go in that uh, in this walk, which is nigh on 1600 foot. <laughs> pretty much on the full height of Windhill in one go. <laughs> but uh, hey, why not? Go big or go home. Put in an ambulance if you do. Look at the sky, look at the clouds there. That actually might make a cracking photo down there. So I'll catch up with you when we get a bit further around. Beautiful shot of uh, Lady Bower there. See the bridge, Snake Pass Road. We are up here. Hercring Stones and the Wheel Stones on. Uh, was it last week's? No, the week before, so a couple of walks ago. Again, I'll put a link up there to that walk. And then we walked all along Derwent's edge and back round to the uh, vampire wreck. But yeah, cracking that. But we're heading across here now towards the plant. It's so warm. It says 11 degrees, degrees today. You can see the heat wave coming off here. I'll tell you what, temperature gauges, I think. Anyway, we're going to crack on down here. Another of these. Uh, water troughs that frog spawn in there could well be look see the little eggs yeah that's frog spawn you see it or toads the toads that's full of it cool 
I'm tempted to stick this. It is waterproof, but <laughs> you know, look at that. Cool. It's a sauna spring. And we go down this path here. Follow us along this wall for a while now. And then we turn off left to start the uh, last bit of the ascent. But yeah, stunning views. Look at the edges there. Uh, I'll have to do that Bamford, Egg walk, Bamford Egg Edge walk one day. Maybe in winter when it's not so rammed. Because it does get a bit busy. I think last time I did it was in fog <laughs> or cloud. So didn't get many good views really. Anyway, we're going to head off up here now. Guys, feels never ending. <laughs> Jesus. I need to get a bit fitter, I think. Last couple of walks, I haven't been so many steep holes, so <laughs> it's amazing how quickly you lose it. But we'll crack on. We're getting there, step by step. Look at that. That's Durant Reservoir. Lady Bower, we went up across the last time, or time before that. Stunning. And there's a trick point. There's Bradwell and Brough, Shatton Moor, Offerton Moor, over towards Abney. Bamford, Hathas is in a difference, distance and on the edges. That was a tough climb. But we're nearly there now. the trig. Oh. Then I'll do a, a, a drink again I think and then uh, have something to eat, get some energy. We're going to follow this path here now, and there's a uh, Lewis Hill, Great Ridge, Kinder Scout. And the Hope Valley. <laughs> so, you can see Lewes Hill there, and we're on Wynn Hill. So the legend was there was a 7th century battle between the forces of Edwin of Northumbria and the Cynegils of Wessex. And Edwin's forces were on this side, the Cynegils were on the other side. And basically there was a wall near the summit, and what the soldiers on this side did basically pushed all these boulders down, you can see them here onto the soldiers of Wessex and it meant them given the crushing victory. However, they've never really found any evidence of that and they suspect that the hill may be called after Wyvern Hill or Willows Hill. As there are some remnants of the odd willow around here. I think I noticed a couple on the way up. But I prefer that story. <coughs> there was some battle here and they hurled these rocks down onto the enemy. And the guys on Wyvern Hill obviously won and the guys on Lewes Hill lost. So we're heading this track down here now. I'm going to circle around the bottom of Lewes Hill to the farm, back to Castleton, and I think I'm going to have a well-deserved pint of cider. So we started a, we've come round here and up here. We've got about seven miles to go now, um, so probably about just under three hours. So we're going to go right across the loss, cross over here, and back round there. So I'll catch up with you in a bit. So head along here now. There were some fucking right idiots on that uh, trig point then. Teenagers, don't know where they were from, throwing rocks off the top, but some bloke gave them a proper rousting. <laughs> they didn't know what to do, so they sort of buggered off with a few effing and jeffings like they do. Thinking of Johnny Rock. Why do people aren't even come out here? Just stay in your fucking shitty hole wherever you come from, mate. Anyway, 
less of that we're going to carry on down here so it's all downhill now for a while there's a bit, a bit of a climb left just around the bottom of loose hill but that's pretty much most of the climbing done today and god that was a bit rough <laughs> not rough but you know I did, but I did train my legs last night so that probably didn't help doing lots of reverse lunges and stuff so for the first time in a long time so legs are a little bit tired but yeah should be easy going now along this ridge but stunning you can see look at all the cars glistening in the distance at the bottom of Mamtor that's going to be absolutely rammed so I was going to go up Loose Hill and down Hollins Cross but I'll forget that we'll just uh, go back the lower route a bit easier going and then I'll hit back and get my wallet get a nice nice cold pint of Aspals down me and I'll go back home cup of tea and then back down the pub again tonight for the quiz night I won 280 quid last week <laughs> uh, pure luck yeah they have a load of jugs on the ceiling and there's a there's a drawer in them they ain't got drawn out and you have to go and find the uh, the Joker Lego piece in the uh, in the, one of the mugs and uh, for whatever reason I chose a lantern and it was in there but get sold down for that George in Castleton mate Friday night banging quiz night bingo and uh, the Joker and you know there's a few hundred quid up for grabs even on the bingo you can be pushing 200 quid sometimes for a full house they're a good crowd in there so yeah we're gonna crack on down here now and there's Castleton and the Great Ridge beautiful I'll put a uh, I'll put some uh, indicators on what those peaks are but that's stunning I'll take some pictures here and crack on there you go that's um, all Port Castles from the other side remember we were over there we walked around and up there along there and then back down we looked at the Bolton Defiant wreck and the uh, Gloucester Meteor I'll take some pictures of that because uh, yeah it's cracking that There's a stunning Vale of Edo. So, Lewis Hill going to Russia Pedge, Kinder Scout, all the way around. Beautiful. That's pretty much where you do the Edo skyline, which I mention every walk I do. <laughs> but yeah, stunning view that. We're going to head down to the cross, Hope Cross. We'll hang around there for a minute, and then we're going to head off to Edale End, and then cut around the bottom of uh, Lewis Hill. About, say, the five mile left now over 12 miles so yeah probably almost two thirds of the way through now especially about by about half five six so yeah stunning I'll catch up with you later You can see that it looks like an old path you can see the sort of how deep it is that's normally a good indicator that it's a well used very old path um but used by all sorts farmers and whatever shepherds and god who knows who else but yeah we're following it all the way down here to Edale end which is over there so over there yep we go for this cool style look at that gate post there that's quite cool with a big square hole in it I'll take a picture of that for the old style group <laughs> to get some cracking photos today but yeah that'll make a good one so I shall catch up with you see the path goes all the way along there so yeah I'll probably catch up with you in a mile or so 
There you go. Sheffield to Manchester train. Nice little train journey that through here. We're heading down here now. Just wanting to get to my <laughs> previous limit of about nine, ten mile. So we're actually a little bit further today, twelve mile. Do a few around that length with a bit more ascent in it and then I'll start to push it out a bit more then. Just met a couple who were doing the EDL Skyline, breaking it up over a couple of days, about 20 mile all told. I might do the Kinder Skyline first, that's about 18 and to be honest once you're up, fairly steady going. Oh, look at that little waterfall there, that's quite cool. Just uh, come round here and you'll see, hopefully. You can hear it. Yeah, look there. Uh, cool. So all loads of water coming off. So headed down here now, over the railway line, skirting around the men up there, I think. Not all the way to the top, thank God, because that'll be a crippler today. So yeah, <laughs> and then back home for a pork pie. Got a little bit of a cornflake top for energy. That really does boost you. I got to Hope Cross and I was feeling a bit like flagging, so got a bit of that in me. Boom! I've been on whiz. <laughs> anyway, I don't know what that would be like. We're going to carry on down here now. I'll catch up with you in a bit. Have a few branches come off this tree. So a bit of a lamb over there making a wailing noise. Looks like that's been uh, had a few branches out in the storm. We'll uh, get under here quite quickly, I think. <laughs> I don't know why them landed on you. Would you? Yeah, nearly at the road now. So, yeah, I'll meet up with you in a bit. It's clear, there's still plenty of water around, so it's like a bloody brook. <laughs> We're going up here to the left and the bottom of Lose Hill. Knee's starting to a bit now, so I'm just going to take it a bit steady. Uh, fucking falling apart, me. <laughs> Not one thing, it's never. So I want to go uphill, more so when I'm downhill or on a hard surfaces. But yeah, there's a path up here that curves around to the left. And then, uh, yep. Not far to go now, hopefully. Yeah, you can see we walked all the way along there from the top of Wen Hill, all the way along to Hope Cross, and down and up here. So, around here now towards Lewes Hill. So we go to Lewes Hill Farm or Hall and then drop down into Castleton from there. Whoa, hot day, a bit of a headache. It's a bit too much sun for a ginger. <laughs> really? Jesus. A bit stuffed if you were to port there champ, wouldn't you? Head down here now, about just under three mile left. Beautiful daffodils there. I'll make a nice shot with that tree. Are a bit steeper than it looked. Okay now. Come up here to Lewes Hill. We cut over to the left towards Lewes Hill Farm and then just follow the path back down into the middle of Castleton then. It's about two mile left I think. So not long now. Okay now, we've just uh, climbed up from where that white Lose Hill Farm, I think it's called, like a luxury place to stop. We're heading down here, not up there, thank fuck. <laughs> that was tough. Whew. Should be straight across to Lose Hill Farm and downhill now. So we've got some good views as we come over the top here of the uh, Castleton and when it's passing that, so I'll cut up when we come round that corner. So you can see where we came, went hell, all the way over there, all the way back down here and up here. And see Bamford there, and uh, the cement works. Not Bamford, Hope. Yeah, Bamford. <laughs> I'm losing the will to live now. Uh, it says over there. Stunning walk. Oh, they're cloud in the sky. At points. Beautiful. I'm going to drink about 12 pints of cider tonight, I think, to make up for this. 
There we are. Just going to drop down here now. Well, that climbing's out of the way. <laughs> so we just go this way now. Straight over. And straight down to the road. Back to Castleton. You can see Peveril Castle, Winnets Pass, Mam Tor, Hollins Cross, Back Tor, and Loose Hill is just up there. Where we're not going today. <laughs> I think a moment. 12 miles is going to be about as far as I'll be going but like I was before just keep doing 12 miles and then next time 14 and 16 and 18 and then <clears throat> then multi-day <laughs> which will be tough oh, straight over here anyway downhill all the way and then flat <laughs> probably about 40 minutes 45 minutes back now Interesting little path. See if we don't go all oh, save a tit. Oh, your knees now, man. Jesus. <laughs> Comments, mate, because it's a fucking bin there. Blankers. Back in Castleton now. There's that mill over there for the other side. There's a duck race on in Castleton tomorrow, which I'll be going to watch. I'm not sure which bridge it says Mill Bridge, I don't think this is Mill Bridge, but it could be. But anyway, it starts at the uh, near the uh, Instagram house and then so it's about 3 30, I've got a few bets on. But I'm gonna stop filming now. We're getting into Castleton, it's gonna be mental. Well, back at last, I was a cracking walk. Just to rest on the old tootsies. Walk down the pub and get a cold pint. So that's about 12 miles, 1500 foot of ascent. Bulk of that going up Windhill, I think. Um, which was a good thousand, I reckon, at least. Oh, but that was good, that. Um, put the Roman Fort in. Got a couple of medieval crosses in. Uh, the legend of Windhill. So it was all good, that. Um, yeah, so I'm going to chill out now for a bit. Go and uh, imbibe a little bit of alcohol and I'll see you on the next walk. <laughs>